Hey everyone, it's Andrew from IDB here. iOS 11 Beta 5 is upon us with many, many new changes and small tweaks since we last saw Beta 4. One notable omission is iCloud for Messages. It'll do everything it did in the past, but it will not do the new features iOS 11 was going to bring. Apple says it has been removed and will come in a future release of iOS 11. As far as new things go, inside of the camera app on the iPhone 7 Plus, when you go to portrait mode, there's a new little splash screen that explains exactly what portrait mode is and how best to work it. There have been a few more icon changes. The camera icon has been adjusted a little bit to remove the lines along the top, and the settings icon has also been darkened a little bit since we last saw it. Inside of Control Center, several new tweaks as well. The music one is probably the biggest. There is now a new little icon in that top right hand corner that you can quickly tap to jump in there and change your source of your audio, whether system capture, any Bluetooth headphones, or an Apple TV. Of course, it'll also start to flash with a little animation when any new audio sources are near. There are also new little alerts along the top that notify you on different things, like low power mode on, low power mode off. It doesn't work on all, obviously flashlight, it does not say anything, but things like do not disturb, it does it as well. We saw messages up here in the past, but it seems to have expanded to other functions inside a control center. Inside of the notification center, you can now swipe all the way to the left and there's an animation and when that clear button switches from just being half that to the full thing, swiping all the way to the left will fully clear that notification and it similarly works to the right. A short swipe will just bring that button, but if you do a long swipe, it'll stretch it all out and then just open up that application for that notification. If you have a pin or a custom passcode, the buttons on here, the little dots on the top, used to be black, but they've been fixed and are now white in this new update. If you have your phone horizontally, it has been fixed for many. Mine used to look like this literally before this beta, and now it has been aligned properly. The music widget on the lock screen has also been updated slightly. There's just a little bit more information. You can now view the song, the artist, and the album that that song comes from. Since we are looking at music stuff, if we jump into the actual music app, the icon, the generic one for an artist, that has been updated slightly since we last saw in iOS 10 and iOS early iOS 11 betas. Small update for Apple Watch users, now inside of the Watch app, there is now an option for the Nike Plus Run Club. It automatically puts it in there right after your list of default apps and before the installed apps, and if you do not have it installed, it allows you to simply do that right from the Watch application. The health app has a new little splash screen here to help improve health and activity by allowing you to share your anonymous data with Apple. And when you hit learn more, there's a big little screen that explains exactly what's going on in a nice little manner. You can ha tap on done. You don't have to give them your information as anonymous as it is. You can don't allow or allow it. It is up to you. Definitely opt in. Not something that you're required to do by default. When we dive into the settings, general and background app refresh there are now options for this background app refresh on the top here it is on there's a wi-fi and a wi-fi and cellular option they can use to default for all of the apps in this little window the sos function has also been updated if you quickly press the lock button five times a quintuple press that'll activate the sos feature and either auto call or call one of your emergency contacts that you have listed there's also an animation that goes along with it to let you know what a quintuple press is and which button it is to press. When opening a folder, the name on there is now delayed a little bit. It fades in slightly after the actual folder itself comes in. Smart invert mode, which is essentially kind of Apple's version of a dark mode or a dark theme, now has a flash of gray as it switches modes. So you can see here, I'm currently in that smart invert mode. Tap it again and switch back and again, a flash of gray. It's now very easy to save files to the Files app. When you go ahead and tap on Save to Files, it gives you that option. You cannot create any new folders, but you can still tap on any of the existing folders and add it there directly. So it's really easy to save documents there. So here I have a getting started guide for the Spark drone. I can just pick one. It is a zip file, actually. So I saved it to the Files app. I'm going to jump over there and go into the Preview folder. Just going to scroll down, find the Preview folder, open that up and sort it alphabetically. Find the actual document itself. There's the zip file in the center, Spark Quick Start Guide. I can even preview the content. Makes it really easy to download files and save them into your iCloud Drive. If you are someone who uses FaceTime quite often, you will notice this pretty quickly and they've changed the ringtone essentially when you're calling someone. 
That is exactly what it sounds like. On the iPad, there's now new Getting Started pages, allowing you to access the dock from anywhere and how to switch between recent apps very quickly. And of course, the general welcome to iPad Getting Started thing after you do an update. When you raise your phone to wake on the newer models, it has been slightly updated. It has just a simple fade in effect instead of the 3D effect that we saw in the past. And other than that, iOS 11 Beta 5 just brings a whole host of new bug fixes. So this is not the exhaustive list. If there's more that you found, let us know down below in the comments. Please be sure to subscribe, check out IDB for more info, and until next time, it's Andrew for IDB.